James Green, Short Series Shenanigans. All right, this is going to be episode two, and what we're going to cover in this episode is wiring up the switch, as you saw in the other episode, or if you haven't watched it, we'll go ahead and update you. So this actually had a power switch, and this is off a Dumore tool post grinder circa World War II, 30s, 40s, we'll say. Okay, so it's got a Bakelite switch and a very well-constructed one. Um, and here's the information on the switch. If the light will pick it up and focus on it, or the camera. Let me, sometimes how it helps is if I, so the camera will just focus on, so you guys can see the switch. That's what's on here, okay? And the insides of it, very well built. Bakelite with copper folded in there, and this is what you call the back of the switch. And here's the front portion. It's actually the rocker and the contacts and everything of the spring. Very, very well constructed and built. So, it actually, you know, we don't want to pop it out, but we're going to go through and clean that. Uh, it's got the brass screws. So what we're going to do, um, how they hooked this up on the other one here, and we're going to repeat, wash, rinse, and repeat, and that's what this video is going to be about. How they just took one of the leads and did that to actually tend the connections so we're gonna recreate the same thing so uh, what we talked about you know at this point we can pretty much make it up as we go if we're gonna have a longer cord so what we're actually going to do is I've got a extension cord here that uh, personally it's been nicked a few times and it's something I'm willing to sacrifice to create uh, a new extension or a new cord for this that's why I keep them around all right, so we're going to go ahead and unwind some of this. As a matter of fact, there's a good spot to make a splice. is right where it was repaired at one time for some reason. So we're just going to go ahead and cut that. And of course, I know that this is not plugged in. I don't know how many times in the past I've seen guys cut into a cord with it plugged in or not knowing it was plugged in. So. That is definitely going to be long enough for what we need here in the shop. So, because we have the plug already intact. All right, and let's just kind of duplicate what they've got here. And I'm going to try to show you guys this. I'm going to set you at a good angle here. All right. So, let's, matter of fact, I know I'm going to have to get out a heat gun, a solder gun, and some strippers wire strippers not the two lady kind that dance on brass poles although that would be nice i'm not opposed to that but all right it's humor guys it's humor i know some people get offended by stuff like that but if you watch my channel long enough you know that it's humor so i know i need to actually change switch the blade around and speaking of stropping the blade where is my leather strop at Actually, I will get nothing up. We'll just just to oh yeah, if you'll take a new blade and kind of do that, it gets really sharp. And the reason you want a really really sharp blade is so when you cut your fingers, you don't feel it. But up. Uh, I'll be here all week. I'm just kidding. Okay, so, so in the last one, so we'll start down here at this end. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to open some of this up on the end first because we're going to have to still disassemble. I haven't disassembled the wine. I got to pull the windings out of the case and everything. So let's go ahead and make this actually so we clean it up. Just so we have the cord nice and clean. Now, depending on what you have, you don't want to put certain chemicals on a cord so you don't break it down. This is another reason where these these Gojo wipes that you get from O'Reilly's, these things are handy. I love these things. Some stores have them in stock. Others, you have to order them, but they can generally get them overnight or the next day. Let's get a couple of these out. All right, number one. They're great for cleaning up a lot of stuff, and 
They're non-toxic, they don't hurt your cuts, and they don't harm your equipment, they don't harm plastics. So first thing first, let's just clean the general gunk and allows us to kind of go down here and make sure there's no other nicks in the line anywhere. Because this, this extension cord, I've had this thing for well over 10 years. So it's gotten stiff and it's time to just be replaced. And I've got others. So we'll go down, clean it up, just give it a good general wipe down. Get some of this other stuff off. And the nice thing about these wipes, um, they save you from having to run a lot of water down the sink when you're cleaning up after working in the garage. You can wipe your equipment down. It doesn't harm the finish, the bed, or anything. And I've, I've done it. Of course, you know, you always want to make sure you go back and oil stuff down, but good for cleaning stuff up. All right. So let's set this one over there. All right. And it's a little cold outside. We'll just kind of wrap that so it's not flopping around here. All right like this. Like doing a lasso. We'll just do a little like that. There we go. All right. So that we don't slip. This is something I learned when I was a kid when you're wanting to strip wires. I'm always talking about the old millwright, David House, that taught me growing up. One thing to use a vice for. So if you're stripping wires, see so you don't slip. Here's a trick and I want to make sure I show you guys this. Okay, so because we know we're going to need a lot inside, so let's give ourselves plenty. So to be careful not to just cut through very gently, and that's why you want it this sharp, very gently. I'm trying to make sure I don't block this. If you go like this, real gentle. And depending on, that's another reason to use, you want the material clean. So you can see you're just going through. You don't want to nick your other wires, okay? So you have a nice sharp blade. Just rolling it through. And then when you get close, you can actually twist. All right. We've got one little spot. All right. Yep. What we do very carefully down, open it up. There we go. Because this stuff is, when they make it and it cools, it actually sticks to all your wires. So it's not going to slide off. So whenever possible, you don't want to cut towards yourself. And he showed me this, and because I've, I've, I've used this method a lot and it works really well. So you can really control your wire and it'll follow along because when these wires are built when the cords are built they're actually twisted and you just real careful the blade will want to follow the wires around just very gently there you go so all right double check our wires sometimes you'll get little nicks but it didn't go through the insulation so we're good to go so I'm not going to cut anything off the end of those yet because unknown how I want to do it and there's no sense in opening it up yet till I'm ready. So we do want to move down the wire, okay? Plus I got to get grommet material. I got to get some grommets, make some, because the other ones cracked and fell apart. So what we're going to do next is we're going to recreate this in there. So basically we want an area that is We'll just start there on one end on one side. Make a little mark and come down here that same distance. Make a little mark. Same thing. Go around real gently. This is one of those you can kick me and you can cuss me. But by God, don't rush me. Okay, we get the insulation. 
Okay, there was a little nick on the green wire there. That's fine. We can fix that. Not a showstopper. There's some stuff I have that's liquid electrical tape. They have it in different colors. You can actually use that to fix those. That's why you got to be careful when you're doing this. We're going to come down here and just do our little cut. Yep. Real easy like. So when you get there, it just pulls right off. All right, pull our paper out, clean that. And so there was a little nick on the ground, not a showstopper. So we're going to repeat exactly what they had there. And what they did is they just used the black wire. And so we will do the same. What I'm going to do is actually cut that right in the middle. We'll just copy exactly what they had. So cut it in the middle. And we're going to actually tin those, whether I get it all done on video or not, I don't know. So then we come over here with the good old fashioned, or not good, but these are, if you don't have a set of these, uh, they're in multi, different multiple brands, you can set your wire tension. I'm not too happy with how they crimp down here. The cutters are okay, but what I like is the fact that they the wire strippers. Those are great. Um, you come up here and strip back. And they're just phenomenal for that type of stuff. Let me just see if you guys can get it on camera so you can see how they work. Because like I said, depending on where you're at, I've always said it on my channel. You know, um, you may or may not have used these before. So you just come in here, get your plenty of room, and they bite down. Boom. All right. So we're going to tin these wires, and I know I'm going to need a little bit more. Slide back. And that's what's nice about them is you can, if you want to make sure it bites down, you can actually press down on it a little more. Get a little more over here on this one. All right. Because we're going to tin these, let's go ahead and twist them up. Because we're going to need to make loops. We're going to copy exactly what they have. And I should have already grabbed my stuff out. So what I like to do, and I, you guys, if you've seen my uh, live feeds, the little, let me back the camera up here, little torch works great for doing stuff like this. Sometimes this thing lights by itself, other times I have to there we go. Get my solder ready and it is right here all right we're just going to go ahead and tin these up this is so much quicker than doing it with a soldering iron that cigar cigarette lighter some people call it a crack lighter uh, this I've actually picked this up from uh, years ago from a hobby store I don't remember but I know you can get them different places they're refillable butane only and they're the little you get the big you know butane things and you push it in and so you can refill this over and over and over now sometimes the electronic or the if this the because I had this well over 10 years will be fussy you just get a regular cigarette lighter and click it back up so, if you're doing like lots of small soldering and stuff, that's the way to do it. And you let it cool, or I do, and we come back with, because uh, we're just going to make some eyelets here. Should be able to just, we've got insulation in there for when I was pulling that other old stuff out. Should be able to just make some real... And if you do it like I've done it here, rather than make a circle and then try to tin it, because if you try to make a circle and then tin it, chances are you'll actually fill the circle up. And you won't be able to get your screw in there. Okay, so I've done some of these in the past. It's been a while. 
So I figured, hey, this would be good to put on the channel. So we've essentially recreated what they've got right here. Right here. So pretty much within reason should be able to hook it back up. See if you guys get you guys a little closer so you can see what we've done again. So we've pretty much duplicated what they've got here. All right, so it should work. Now, we did talk about, we made a little nick. That's an easy fix. Rotate this a little bit. I've got this stuff here, and I've used it before, and you can get it at pretty much any, any Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever it's called. And I believe even All Industrial has it in their master catalog. You'll have to look. But you can get it in different colors. They have black, red, green, and then white. This is, and it doesn't dry right away, but it's liquid electrical tape, and it's for things just like this. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take a little bit, and I'll let it dry, because I'm not going to put this together right away. I want to make sure, so for little nicks that may or may not be able to see in there, we're going to put some electrical tape, and we're going to let this stuff dry for a couple of hours. And it also helps to seal up if you want to quote unquote weatherproof or moisture. But in a sense, it's not going to make it total 100% resistance, but you can go in and seal up, and it works good. And I'm going to let it dry for a couple hours. It works great for it. And what I will do, because I like to have it up and seal inside of, just in case I've, you know, I couldn't see any in there, but I also like to be able to seal in around my wires. And so when I go to put my uh, grommet, it'll slide on here however far. I'll reapply this to help seal whatever may be in there. So that's how I've used this stuff in the past, and I've had good luck with it. When it dries, it's just like electrical tape. Um, you know, obviously you're supposed to make sure you don't get it on your hands, and if you do, um, liquid electrical tape, it talks about everything on here. It's made by Gardner Bender, okay? Pretty much industry standard here in the U.S. You can get that anywhere in the electrical supply portion. They've got it in different colors. Uh, I use this a lot when I redid my uh, surface grinder, and there were, just like in here, when you start getting into items on your older equipment, let's say, I don't want to replace the cord, but we need to like repair the insulation. Let's say we didn't want to, and we wanted to keep the original cord, or it's a piece of electrical equipment. Man, I don't want to take that apart, but the insulation fell off of the wire. Bingo. Right there. You can take this, you, you know, if that brush isn't long enough, get your longer acid brush or something, and you can go in and apply it to reseal those white. Let's say if we wanted to, and say, okay, well, for historical archaeological purposes, and I'm being sarcastic, um, we needed to keep this, or it's a piece of equipment. They don't make it anymore. The insulation fell off the wiring. That's why they have it in different colors. Um, you can put it in there. Let's say or it's got to get you by until you can get that or, you know, this would be a, that's like a get out of jail free card for, you know, we need to fix, we need to re-insulate the wires so that they don't touch or let's say it's inside of a metal compartment and you're worried about if a wire rubs up against something, you could paint the inside of that metal compartment with this to insulate. So if in the process of the vibration of the equipment or machine or motor, if the white, you're going to have another layer of layer of insulation or protectant, and I've done that before. Uh, put it in inside things where I was worried about a wire that might rub against like a lid you put on something. Let's say there's no data on the inside of that lid, but you put the lid down and you know that wire's rubbing. And let's say there's no data on the plate. Paint some of that on it. Let it dry and then put your plate on. So when your wires are touching, there you have rubber touching rubber, less likely to wear a hole and. You know, I know once this stuff dries, it kind of gets sticky. And if you have like rubbers, touching rubbers, they're going to actually grab and hold. They're not going to slide. So again, use your imagination. I've used this a lot. It saved my bacon on certain electrics over there in that surface grinder where insulation, because they got hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold 
on certain little items, the insulation had fallen off the wires. And I'm like, man, if you touch this, the whole thing, it's like Jenga. I'm like, man, okay, wait a minute. I just needed to go in with some of this on those wires, put in, instead of trying to go back in with actual uh, electrical tape, bing, bingo, right there. It comes in different colors. So if you want to use different colors for whatever reason, I think they were like, I want to say this was $10. A bottle not more than I don't remember I've had it for a year or so now great stuff highly recommended um, we're gonna let it dry we'll see how quick it's already dried we've been talking about it right here um, how quick to the touch so it's still a little bit tacky um, it takes a little bit I usually give it an hour or so but just like here inside the motor windings you know I still gotta slide this out but you know we're definitely going to use it in here pulling this stuff apart. Set this over to the side. Actually, let's well, that's dry enough to do what we need to do. Alright. So how this went was in the two fastening screws that I need are actually right here. It's dry enough now it's not gonna like run everywhere. It's, it's a little tacky, so it's not too bad. So let's go ahead and attempt to, this is where doing things on camera can get interesting. So, all right, I wanna stop talking for a little bit. Sorry, I'm gonna get you guys down here. And I'm going to attempt to put this together I'm going to focus on what I'm doing. I'm just going to let you guys watch. I'm trying to get these in and see I got those turned a little too tight around the screws. Make the holes too small. All right. Let me rag that right there. See that stuff is still tacky. Generally I let this stuff dry, but I want to show you guys for camera purposes. This is where it gets fun. I'm trying to put this stuff together on camera. Yeah. May have to strip back some more of that. Yeah. All right. I don't want to get that stuff all over the place. I'm going to let it dry because I do not want to mess up my insulation. So, you guys get the idea. I'm going to let this dry for a little while. And I will definitely show you in the next video when we come back and actually show putting the rest of the machine together. I don't want to get that all over the place. So these wipes are actually pretty good at cleaning up a lot of things. Yeah, I don't want to get that stuff all over and then have it actually accidentally insulate where I don't want it to. So, but there you go. You guys get the idea. Slow and steady wins the race. Don't get in a hurry. Um, These wipes are really, really good because they're abrasive and they don't remove paint. So we want to clean up the data plate on a lot of things. And if you use carb cleaner or bright cleaner or something, it can lift the paint in a lot of cases. You can actually rub down and I'll use these to clean the outside of this case because we don't want to uh, mess up the wrinkle paint or the data plate. And you can see from previous videos in this one, We'll just scrub it up real good here. How oh, well. We get all the years of shop dust and grease off of things. Got lots of cleaning to do. So there we go. There we go. Got all the 
the junk so you can see how nice and clean now everything is cleaned up the data plate easy to read nice and clean now those are handy 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 so I would be afraid to use carb cleaner or something like that because it would pull all the paint off and this is a data plate's actually in pretty good shape so there you go I hope it has been very useful to you so just back over here we're gonna order bearings I don't know how long it's gonna take um, we're definitely gonna put this back together and in the process we're actually gonna do some videos I don't know when or how long but I'm actually gonna make some more pulleys because this one is a little bit bigger model than the one that I have and so I'm gonna go through order bearings because I've got to order bearings for the motor bearings for the spindle and I need to order bearings for mine because the bearings in the spindle have went out and as you can see <coughs> on that data plate depending on what size pulley <coughs> you get you can have some very very high RPM you can roll the tape back or not the tape you can back <coughs> excuse me the video up and you look at that data plate and it tells you depending on your pulley sizes you could essentially get to 42,500 RPM so when you go to replace bearings be cognizant of that cheap bearings aren't going to last as much so depending on what's available this would be a good candidate in my mind for ceramic bearings but again they were making bearings way back then that weren't ceramic so we'll see what's available out there and when I do find it I will let you guys know in the video when we go to do all that I'll do a video on it so if you guys are rebuilding or thinking about purchasing because they are out there on the internet but you've got to put some love into them um, and I will try to do this is what I run into this is how you go about it so if you haven't been into a, a tool post grinder motor I'm taking some of the scariness out of it or I don't know what's in there or what does right look like again I haven't looked on the internet so I don't know what videos are out there before I made this one or made these two this series we'll call it the do more tool post grinder rebuild this will be video number two and I will walk you guys through as I get the parts in and as I do it it'll be on the channel available to look at so thanks for watching I appreciate it you guys and gals thank you again to all industrial tool supply uh, they're my main channel sponsor if you guys have any questions www.allindustrial.com go look them up uh, give them a call uh, I know they are working on trying to get a new website up, so bear with them. I know I haven't dealt with any of that, but I can only imagine it's a very monumental task. So this is the first part of 2017 here. Um, call them, you know, talk to them, request a free master catalog. They'll send you one, uh, mention my name and channel and let them know this is where you heard about them. Uh, talk to them, give them a chance. They're a small eight-man company out in Southern California, and uh, they are really, really stand-up people. And uh, so when you call, ask for Mr. Jim Henry. He's a great guy, and he'll help you out. Thanks to all my new YouTube subscribers and my guys that follow me, guys and gals. Um, you make it worth doing. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to be able to uh, keep doing this for you guys and look forward to seeing everybody out there in California. I know this, uh, this summer should be coming up. Don't know the date yet, but stay tuned. I know it's just around the corner. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself and take care of your family because remember, at the end of the day, you and your family is all you got. Till next time, get out in the garage, play with some stuff, and uh, you know what? If you run into an electrical problem, try some liquid electrical tape. It just might get you out of a bind. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.